Most MMO games don't start getting good until a few hours in. They're long-term, slow-burn adventures from humble beginnings to epic finales. Slay Together, however, bucks this trend and can be entirely finished in one afternoon. I played for about seven hours and am now in the top 50 global players. I have every Steam achievement and have killed the game's only boss twice, which means I am now an authority on this game. Slay Together is a lightweight MMO made by one person over about five years, and to be fair, it is actually a solid foundation to build from, however it's still got a lot of building to do. It's a perfect example of how one person with a vision can indeed build a working game, and it's also a perfect example of why that game probably shouldn't be an MMORPG. With no in-game chat system, four different weapon types, and more rolling than a Dark Souls themed Limp Bizkit concert, it's extremely rough around the edges and incredibly repetitive, but let's see if we can find some gold in this six-hour RPG. So welcome, I'm Josh Strife Hayes and this is Worst MMO Ever, a series where I play every MMO MMO game I can find in a journey to find the worst. Drop a like on the video or sub to the channel for more MMO stuff and ring the bell for all the future notifications. As usual, a massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon, Twitch and YouTube who keep the channel alive. More information on how you can support at the end. For now, let's begin. Slay Together is a free MMORPG on Steam. It encourages you to join thousands of other players. However, right now, according to this graph, there are four people online which I suppose is better than this graph, which seems to have forgotten how to graph. Now, the game is still in beta and being actively worked on. In fact, the latest Reddit post was 11 days ago, so I don't want to discourage the creator of this game, because creating things is hard, and getting this far with the game deserves a level of respect. So this isn't going to be a mocking, tearing down review. I'm going to genuinely critique and see where we can find places to improve, as well as compliment what does work. I don't want to discourage creative people being creative. I'll happily mock a soulless company filling their dark pattern cash grab game with pay to win and microtransactions, but creations born from passion and love should be supported. I'm not saying it's perfect, I'm saying that the heart is in the right place. The game also has 86% current Steam review score and 72% of all reviews are positive, which is a very impressive foundation. The main menu has the traditional owl staring at you, and when you click make a character, the camera flies to a different 3D location. I like this, it's a small but nice touch. Character creation is pretty simple, you can be thin or wide. So I'm a wide boy, and now we are in. This is the hub and only camp. Movement is WASD, space is dive, left click uses the main hand weapon, in this case one of those wooden toy swords they sell at castles or renaissance fairs, and right click if I had a shield, would block. Movement is a tad laggy, and S doesn't run backwards, instead it turns and has you run toward the camera, so movement is independent of camera facing. Have a chat with Henry and he wants some wolves killed, because they are surrounding the camp. Kind of feels like a you problem for building the camp in the middle of Wolf Forest, but I'm here to serve. M brings up the world map. You've got six locations, the safe town, then the forest, bandit city, harvest fields, the coast, and the jungle, with level ranges shown for each, so linear progression is encouraged. I browse the menus, and you've got the standard character equip screen, inventory skills, and level up stuff, but strangely, no quest list despite having quests, and this is likely because you can only be on one quest at a time, it will always be shown to the right, and there is only one quest line. It is always kill X enemy, move on to the next. So I leave the town by the only exit, this portal, and arrive in the forest. Now combat is tab target to lock on, then left click to attack. There are abilities, but they're purchased at higher levels. So behold, combat. So nice, simple, action-based hit system, but my god, how much damage do the enemies do? The basic enemies will kill you in about three hits. Now, thankfully, rolling does give complete immunity to all damage, but we need to talk about this, because the combat in this game is balanced entirely around the idea of never ever being hit. Armor is pointless, your armor rating purely decorative. You can be wearing some of the best armor in the game and the highest level enemies will still one hit kill you. Even the basic enemies will remain incredibly dangerous, because we'll see later, everything is level scaled. Every enemy in the game only ever auto attacks and they are all overpowered and they all do exactly the same thing. Every enemy locks onto you, then charges up an attack, shown by the red ground marker. However, when the marker fills up isn't when you'll take damage. No, when the marker fills up is when the enemy is going to start their attack animation and it's the animations which matter because some of them have slow attack animations and hurt you at the end so you have a good second and a half to dodge. Others have the damage at the very start so you must dodge immediately. This means dodging isn't about timing the red area 
area, it's knowing about how long after the red area fills each enemy is going to give you before you need to dodge. The only other variation you'll find is the speed at which the red area fills up. As for attacking back, well, the melee weapons, the sword and the axe, have a three-hit combo, with the third hit being the most powerful, but if you interrupt your own combo by blocking or rolling, you'll have to start again. This is important, because the enemy auto attack is so damn powerful you absolutely have to block or roll and then you've got maybe enough time to get one or two hits in before you're rolling again. Meaning, unless you are just tanking the damage and dying, you'll never actually fit that third and final hit of a combo into your rotation. There are a few stun abilities, but they're few and far between. But this combat system, despite being simple, still has issues. You can have two weapons equipped at once, and you switch between them with the six key. But if you fire two arrows, and then go to fire the third arrow and switch to a hammer mid-shot, you'll find yourself doing the third swing of the hammer combo. Because for some reason, the game tracks which hit you are on of a combo, not which weapon you are using, despite the fact bows and magical staves don't have combos. Swinging a weapon, swapping weapons, blocking, dodging, and sprinting all use up stamina, but combat stuff like attacking and dodging uses so little and stamina recharges so fast that unless you start with an empty stamina pool, you'll never run out mid-fight. So that's combat. Now, to move around, you can bring up the world map and teleport to any of the obelisks on any discovered maps, including town. And then I discovered there is a monthly leaderboard, and I'm currently in 469th. Nice. Oh, also, you can't look up. There's a horizontal line limit you can't look above, so if you're a fan of sky graphics or things being above you, this is not the game for you. We hand in the wolves quest and Henry now wants some spiders killed. Now the new player guide box is also telling me to buy potions, so I do, and the shop sells them in stacks of 100. You then drag them from your inventory to your hotbar. Now normally games make you buy stacks like this so you can chug them quickly, get through them fast and then buy more. But no, Slay Together has quite a long cooldown for potion drinking. In fact, in my two days of play I didn't finish my original 100 potions. And indeed, at higher levels these become pointless because you're either alive or dead. There is no in between. The guide also wants me to buy a scroll of skill, but I can't afford it right now, so we'll come back later. Killing spiders, I also discover you cannot move while attacking. Shooting a bow, casting a magical staff, or using the sword or hammer lock you into position, so you can't run around the enemy while hitting. And as dodging is the best way to avoid damage, in fact the only way to avoid damage without a shield, and you can only get two or three hits in between dodges, you'll want to maximize the damage those two or three hits do. This means using swords or hammers. So bows and magic magical staffs are basically pointless in actual combat, the only thing they do is pull an enemy from far away as no enemy is linked to any other with any kind of group aggro. Even if you see a group of five enemies, you can pull them one at a time with ranged attacks. Pressing K opens the skills window, which scrolls for some reason. It's a square window, but they couldn't quite fit it all in, so vertically and horizontally there's a tiny amount of scroll room, not sure why. When you level up, you'll gain two skill points, and you can put them into increasing your attack speed or damage with any of the four weapons, or increasing your health, movement speed, stamina, or reducing the potion cooldown. And you can pay gold to reset these stats. So I go spider hunting. You've got a mini-map and a general world map, but no local area map showing where specifically in the zone you are, but zones aren't really big enough to get lost in. While fighting the spiders, I have 180 health, and a single spider hit does 70 damage to me, so if I were to try and tank this to get my third hit of a combo in, I'd only survive being hit three times. I hit level 5, and that's a steam achievement. The game has six steam achievements, capping out at reach level 25. That's not the max level of the game, that's just the final achievement they bothered to add. I actually achieved all of these after about five hours of play. As for the level 5 one, 15% of players have this, which means 85% of your player base have quit before they got two quests in. But what would an MMO be without gathering, and what would a small indie MMO be without adding a pointless gimmick to gathering? Press E to gather stuff, but then press E again when the moving arrow is in the correct zone to actually gather it. If you fail, nothing happens. The arrow keeps moving and the zone that you need to aim for just changes place. This means two things. One, you can time exactly when to press and accurately hit the arrow in the zone to gather the thing, or two, because there's no fail state, you can just mash E until the zone happens to end up where the arrow is at the time and then mash E quickly again to gather it. 
This is a great example of a system which sounds good on paper, but doesn't add much in gameplay. I get a few dozen emails a week and several unhinged Discord messages from people designing their own MMO with a huge list of ideas they would like to put into their game. A revolutionary gameplay mechanic, they think. They always want me to read their 50-page design document and say which ideas will and won't work, and here's the thing. The best way to check what will or won't work in a game is to do what Slay Together has done. Actually make a game, put your idea in, and work out if it's doing what you expected it to do. And I think the point of this was to make gathering more active, but what it's actually doing is making gathering more tedious. So here's a suggestion. If you fail to hit the zone, gather one of the resources, and if you succeed, gather three. So even failing isn't a fail state, it's just a baseline, but now the mechanic has a reward. Spiders killed by a skill scroll. Skill scrolls go into your skill menu and they can be added to the hotbar from there. Currently, each weapon only has one skill associated with it, and there are a few general skills, generic ones like do a bit more damage for a bit. Hand in the spider quest and the supporter window pops up asking if I want to buy a sweet owl pet. You know what, right now I'm good. Next quest, kill bears, but forget the quest for a moment. The new player guide recommends we craft something, so let's look at crafting. There are three crafting stations, tailoring for clothes, woodworking for magical sticks, and anvils for less magical but much sharper sticks. Crafting is essentially a linear flow of materials from raw material into stuff. Use the crafting bench to make a raw material into something, then make multiple somethings into something better. To work out what you need for a high-level thing, you must highlight it, work out all of the things it needs, and then go back and manually work out how you make each of those. Your crafting level is tied to your overall level. Unfortunately, you cannot click on a recipe or item above your level so you don't know what the next thing will need until you get to it. So you don't know if it's actually better than your current thing or if you should make something now or save up for the next thing. Now mechanically, the crafting system is actually fine. It just needs a UI overhaul and a more player-friendly way of presenting itself. The actual foundation of the system, how it works, is fine. There's also a magic book which can be used to awaken your items. Pay some gold and your item gets bonuses. You can reawaken an item repeatedly until you get the actual bonus that you want. So I wake up my hammer and go and slap some bears around. Combat seems to be 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of rolling. I also discover if you switch weapons mid-roll, it cancels your roll, which also cancels the iframes attached to the roll and will get you hit. I spot this portal, so I hop on through and, oh look, we're in Westfall. Nope, sorry, we're in Harvest Fields. Wrong game. Accessing a connecting map through the portals automatically unlocks the teleport obelisk of that map. You don't need to go to the obelisk itself. All of the maps are basically a big reskin of the same thing with various types of enemies dotted around, and all of the enemy types are pretty predictable. There will be a basic version of something, a stronger version, and then a strongest version, and killing the wrong version does not count toward quest completion. This design is usually reserved for eastern mob farming games like Metin. So I grind a ton of bears, hit level 10, then miss time a roll, and die. Now when you die, you get sent to the last portal you used, and that's it. No death penalty, no weakness debuff, no equipment durability, just, okay, you died, try again. You know what? Cool. I can live with this. The only punishment for failure is my time. Grinding bears gives me levels, levels give me skill points, and as much as I want to put those skill points into increasing weapon speed, until you increase the speed enough to get three hits in instead of two before needing to roll, speed increase is pointless. Hand in the bear quest and now we're off to kill bandits. I buy a new iron hammer, read the book to wake it up, and then go and bash some heads. Bandit city is accessible through the spider forest, and then I notice something. Earlier, these spiders were level 7, but now they're level 11, just like me. Unfortunately, every enemy in Slay Together is level scaled. Now, level scaling is often used as a way to keep the player feeling a level of threat from the world. The Elder Scrolls Online does it, but it needs to be balanced to still allow a player to feel powerful. A sense of progression is the cornerstone of MMO design. If you play for an hour, you need to feel more powerful than you were an hour ago. Unfortunately, Slay Together scales the enemy's health to almost perfectly match your increased damage from leveling or getting a better weapon, which means every enemy feels just as difficult all the time. It also means the weakest enemy in the game, the wolf, and the toughest enemy, the raptor, feel equally challenging to fight because mechanically they're exactly the same, and if killing a wolf takes you five hits with your weak weapon, once you're a much higher level with a better weapon, it still takes you five hits. This lantern seems to be casting some weird lighting effects onto the bases of all the trees, and then we reach Bandit City and it's spooky? Well, they're going for a horror vibe here. Have a listen, I feel like I'm in the village.
The ominous music in the sparse wooden huts feel very video game level instead of actually a working village in any way. I can't see any specific realistic setup for why the buildings would be this way, and despite the map looking huge, you're hemmed in with invisible walls. And I was thinking, fences! You have fences! You've shown the fence asset in the opening town. This is the perfect place to use fences. Fence in the bandit village. Have the player assault into the village. Would have been a great gameplay bit. So I grind some bandits and notice some ore dotted around the place. And that's when I realize the game has different resources. Wood, ore, flax, various things. And they're all shown by white dots on the minimap. But the placing seems to be random. Every map has something of everything. There's no central mine for lots of ore, no flax field for lots of bots, and while you definitely do find wood in the forest, it's also on the beach in abundance. Slay Together has given every map equal distribution of all materials, which means nowhere feels focused on a specific thing, and also materials take an absolute age to respawn. I try to wait for a respawn, and 15 minutes later, I just give up. I don't know what the system for this is. There's also no wiki for the game, so good luck finding the things that you need. An issue with bows, if you don't lock on to the enemy, you'll shoot where you are moving, not where you are looking. For example, if you press A to run left and then shoot, you won't shoot where the camera is centered, you'll shoot off to the left. If you hold S to run back toward the camera and shoot, the arrow won't go toward the crosshair, it'll go toward the camera, making the whole advantage of bows kind of moot. 20 bandits killed, hand in the quest, and the guy's like, cool, go and kill 20 more, only this time make sure that they're lady bandits. I have a glance over at the horse shop, or stables, you can buy a horse for 25,000 gold, or a better horse for a million gold, or a better horse for owl coins, a premium currency. And this is basically all you can get with premium currency, so you can't really critique the shop too much, because there's not much there. Kill some bandits until one drops a bandit bow plus two, and this is the final system. Remember the magical book of waking things up? Well, you've also got the non-magical stone of making things more better and making stuff more dead. You can pay gold for an attempt to upgrade a weapon to a maximum of plus 10. Upgrades can fail, but your item won't break and you won't lose levels. The higher plus level you're currently at, the more likely the next attempt will fail. And I throw literally millions of gold at this system and manage to take a weapon to plus 6. I find a better sword and killing gets a lot quicker when you can finally hit in that third hit of a combo and then I see another player. So I try to say hi, but there's no chat feature. That's okay, I'll wave. Well, I can't because there's no emote feature. Okay, I'll just jump. Old reliable, that's how MMO players communicate. But no, Slay Together does not have jumping. All I can do is roll, and what the hell is that even supposed to mean? I suppose it's called Slay Together, not Communicate Together. You're just meant to kill things, but even then there's no real advantage to having two people slaying together. If anything, you're just halving the amount of drops you could get, so it should probably be called Slay Within Sight, but please remain over there, thank you. Go to Hand in the Bandit Quest, and the exclamation mark above Henry Questington's head is lying flat, like it's just given up. It's not so much exclaiming as relaxing. It's a relaxation mark now. This sporadically fixes itself somehow, I don't know. Go and kill 20 bandit captains next, okay fantastic. I log out for the night and when I return, when you click play it flies over to your character select bit, but you can't create another character, so it's not really a character select, it's more of an awkward reintroduction to who you are before the game starts. Finally, after hours, I get my first green item, uncommon, and then, my god, I find some armoured trousers. Armour rating 1. So I put them on. Does armor make a blind bit of difference to the damage you take? No. No, it does not. So after my armored trousers do nothing, I try to craft some better armor and try with higher numbers, which means buying water from this guy one at a time. Please add a multiple buy option. And then I make a better top, which is graphically identical to the first. I also see what happens if I try to awaken my shirt, despite the awaken feature saying weapons only. Turns out it works fine and my shirt now gives passive combat buffs. Next quest, kill 20 wild boars. And by this point, I'm just doing quests to see if I can complete every quest in the game. And while I'm on the boar map, I see a red portal. And this is the only red portal in the game and it leads to an elite boar hunting ground and this is the game's one and only dungeon and I'll come back here later. There are three types of boar, small, wild and captain and the next three quests are killing 20 of each but while I'm here I also go and access the coast because visiting it opens up the teleport option and on the coast I find another quest giver and another shop, maybe some variety but no this is actually the same quest line 
and the shop is the same as the village, so despite the NPC having a different name, it is, in all function, exactly the same NPC. I think the point of this was to prevent you needing to travel back to base camp to hand the quest in, the irony being that it takes longer to run across the beach to get to this guy than it does to teleport to base camp and then teleport back to the beach, so it doesn't actually save any time. Selling items to a shop is just as tedious as buying them, you must left click and drag from your inventory to a blank spot on theirs. If you right click, the little destroy box will pop up. And if you right click again to get rid of this box, it just chases your mouse cursor around and you will accidentally destroy your equipment, like I did. Might as well unlock the jungle while I'm here, and now I can teleport around the whole world. But you know what? While we're in the jungle, let's see if I can kill the highest enemy I can find while I'm still pretty low level. And I mean, yeah, you can. It's the same combat, just faster. Hit, hit, roll. Hit, hit, roll. That's all you do. It also seems that you can outwalk the enemies. If you just don't stop moving, you'll be out of the animation's damage range by the time they go to attack. Right, let's grind. 20 boars, done. Buy a horse. The horse walk is slower than my regular walk, but the run is faster than my regular run. Why? I don't mean why for the run, I know why a horse runs faster than a human. It's because a human has two legs and a horse has four legs, so a horse can run twice, but why make the regular walk so slow? Zed opens the event window and logging in every day builds up a stacking experience buff of 10% extra every time, and T opens the achievements menu, kill stuff, craft stuff, the usual. Boar's all done, go and kill 20 Minotaurs. Thankfully there are three different types of Minotaurs and you must kill 20 of each of them, so while I'm doing this, let's just have a read of some reviews. Slay Together is a simple, straightforward, enemy-grinding MMORPG that has built a solid foundation from which it can expand in the future. There are obviously issues that I could choose to nitpick currently, but since the game is currently being updated quite frequently, there's a good chance they wouldn't be relevant to someone reading this in the future. This game is very charming, and it has a lot of potential as an MMO light. It's good for anyone who wants a really simple fantasy game with a solid gameplay loop. It's a very simple MMORPG. Wish there was more content though. To which the developer responded, I'm working on it. I really don't want this to fall through. I finished all there was to do so far in the early access version and my MMORPG itch was scratched. It was charming, it was straightforward, it has that old school feel that I enjoyed very much. I can't wait to see new areas, enemies and gear. Yeah, I wish the developers well on this, but unfortunately for me, this is a hard pass. Too simplistic of just run outside, kill the quest targets, go back, rinse, repeat. Combat is subpar, the main focus that this game is. Just kill targets and go back to turn in quests. Maybe in the future, if this gets out of early access and the game is full of content, there might exist a charm worth playing at that point. Until then, this is a pass. Almost as much content as New World. Minotaurs killed, quest handed in, go and kill 25 Minotaur captains. The amount I need to kill is slowly creeping up, the grind is getting longer. You'll also notice on the skills screen, the weapons have specific skill slots at level 15, 30, and 45. These are places for weapon-only skills bought from the shop. Currently, only one weapon-specific skill exists for each weapon, and the tooltips of those skills don't actually mention that they're weapon-specific, you just need to guess this from the pictures, because the pictures have either a sword, hammer, bow, or staff in them. Minotaur Slaughter done off to the coast to kill 25 crabs, and after spending 15 minutes killing 25 small crabs, we go back to kill 25 regular, slightly bigger crabs. I hit level 25, which is the highest steam achievement in the game. 4% of players have this, and I've also risen to rank 98. Now this is a monthly score chart, and I've been playing for about 6 hours. Top 100 players in a day. I'm actually impressed the game has over 100 regular players, to be honest. The animation of the crab is fine, the UI is fine, the music is fine. Look, Slay Together is an okay foundation. There's not much fundamentally wrong here, it's not broken, it's just not finished, and the creator acknowledges that, so there's not a huge amount of mocking or comedy to be found here because it's just a decent start. 25 regular crabs killed, now go and kill 25 captain crabs. So the maps are all basically the same mechanically, the skills are basic, the enemies are all very similar, and you can experience the gameplay of Slay Together in about two hours, and this whole thing reminds me of something. When I was a teacher, you sometimes notice that students like to do whatever they're already good at, or what they know. They don't like doing things that they're weak at. If I'm teaching a theatre class and someone is good at playing a bad guy, they want to play the bad guy a lot, because they both enjoy it, and they know that other people will see them being 
good at it, they won't make a mistake. But you learn and grow by challenging yourself and doing what you're bad at. And the point of training is to have a safe environment to freely fail in while you're working on your weaknesses. Slay Together can clearly make mid-size open map environments with sporadically placed enemies and resources. You've done it seven times. The problem is, you're just doing what you know you can do repeatedly. And this isn't enhancing the gameplay, it's just lengthening it with more of the same. You don't need your game to be massive to be good. Oftentimes it can be better to be a smaller, more focused experience with multiple things working together and multiple approaches that are all viable. If this game were to add, say, another higher level map with more enemies with the same attack patterns, it wouldn't make the game better. Even though it's tempting to do that as a designer, because you clearly know how to do it, it's safe. But Slay Together won't improve by making safe decisions. It needs creativity. This is a foundation. And you've got the luxury of working on other aspects, such as an updated crafting UI, weapons with elemental damage, or enemies with elemental weaknesses, damaging floor areas, slower but higher damage attacks, mixed in with quick light attacks, enemy AoE attacks, NPCs who need items crafted for them, different quest lines. Slay Together has the makings of the foundation of a middling RPG experience. It just needs more variety. If someone submitted this to me as a piece of work in progress, I'd be perfectly happy with what they've done so far. I'd just say, right, you've already shown me that you can clearly do this. Now work on what the game doesn't have. Don't just add more of what it already does. And it's a great position to be in because normally MMOs add far too many systems and it's overwhelming. Slay Together hasn't yet added enough, so if it carefully adds systems at a slow pace of seeing how much they can add before they become overwhelming, they could find that sweet spot of a new player experience. Kill so many crabs, the beach is now shell and blood, and now we're into the jungle, the final area. Kill 25 small raptors. Now, small raptors do almost all of my health in a single hit, so don't get hit. Kill even more raptors, explore the jungle, and find this rock that you can run inside. The asset is just placed wrong. It's rotated, so you'll always be able to run inside from this side because the bottom is not closed off. This doesn't seem like a difficult fix. I do, however, like how the beach was wide open and the jungle is more enclosed and hilly. It's just a shame the environment is never used in a combat way. Maybe certain enemies shouldn't be able to pass certain obstacles or they leap at you from trees. How about using the roll to travel across dangerous terrain? After killing 25 small raptors and then 25 regular raptors and then 25 captain raptors, these things begin to one hit me. So hit, hit, roll, hit, hit, roll, the same rhythm you've been doing for the last hour. Hand in the Captain Raptor quest and we are done with quests. Once you've done everything, you get daily quests now because of course you do. How about that red portal we passed earlier? Remember the one in the harvest fields? Well, I head back. It's an elite boar hunting ground. Now, this map isn't actually on the world map anywhere. It's the only jungle. It's a linear path to a boss, but the path is blocked by groups of enemies. And you don't want to take on groups at once because all of their attack animations don't sync up, so you're taking damage at random times. This is the only moment a ranged weapon helps because you need to pull single enemies out of the group. Eventually, I reach the boss, which is a big, powerful boar, and there might actually be a mechanic here. I think the red warning attack indicator fills up faster as the boss loses health, which is a nice touch. The boar boss drops a boar bone, which is a rare material used to create a weapon that unfortunately you're already overleveled for. And that's pretty much it. That's the entire game. I wander around for 45 minutes looking for bronze ore to make a better hammer and I spot another player, Solar, number four player in the world this month. Royalty, actual in-game royalty. I then discover if you start a roll and then instantly mount up, you will finish your roll animation on top of the horse, which looks like you've done a tactical dive and mount. I spend 20 minutes waiting for this copper rock to respawn while my horse floats silently above the ground and then I spot perhaps the strangest design choice so far. On the minimap, players have little white icons. They're circles with a point showing the direction you're facing. Now, I assumed these were just flat icons. But watch what happens when you try to roll while mounted. Your horse rears up, and your character model leans back with the rear of the horse, and the arrow on the minimap points up. You can see this happen when multiple players are all doing it. Here's my guess. The player map icon actually cares about the vertical alignment of the player's torso. And because the horse rear is the only animation which alters that, as while mounted, the player's torso is bolted to the angle of the horse's back, which leans back when it rears up, then the arrow on the minimap thinks that you're looking up and adapts to that. What a strange design.
By now, killing a raptor captain, the highest level enemy in the game, is giving me less than 1% of the experience required for another level, meaning I've hit a grinding soft cap. I make a new hammer with all the resources I've collected, then pour in over a million gold to upgrade it to plus six. I even equip a shield and give it a go. Right click just blocks, mechanically no different to rolling. I mess around with the horse and rolling and mounting up and unmounting and manage to clip out of bounds at base camp, but there's nothing interesting to see here. And by the time I end my session, I am rank 54 in the world. And that's Slay Together. Honestly, it's a foundation. It's a base to build from. You've not overreached or overpromised, which is great, but if you add more of the same, more maps, more identical enemies, more kill X quests, you won't elevate this to anything special. Now is the time to make each enemy feel unique, to make the weapons feel different, to add in some more quests and flesh out the world itself to add in secret items or secret areas. Has Slay Together got a future? As a single developer MMO, it's gonna be very slow going, but this is the time to experiment and add on extra to the structure you already have, not just build more identical structure. You don't need to be sprawling, you need to be focused. And if you handed this to me as a piece of work, I'd say, right, we're about halfway there. This, honestly, is a good start. So to end the review, I will award Slay Together C+. Good foundations, see me after class, out of 10. Cheers for watching. Another massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon, YouTube, and Twitch who keep the channel alive. You can support from only one pound a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, and our Discord. And as always, have a great day.